Oh, this is absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. I mean, look at this. These fans, they've been magnificent. They've waited a long time since 1982 to uh, get this sort of glory back to the club. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just really, really good. I tell you what, uh, tell the bus driver, let's swing by St Andrews. Let's give the Birmingham City fans a taste of this. Mwah. Mwah. Hey, 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 get that up, you boys. Hi hey guys, I'm Ozzy Bill and welcome to episode 97 of Raise the Hold, our bid for world domination with Aston Villa. And today it's a summer transfer special. Uh, you can see we've just finished the uh, end of season awards. Congratulations again to Gaz Mosley on winning player of the year. Um, yeah, and I don't really know that we need to do too much this season, if I'm honest. I'll have a quick look here at the, at the player stats for the season. I know people like to see this. Uh, Gaz Mosley played the most games for us. Lionel Messi, second, an absolute Iron Man, as it turns out, uh, for a 37-year-old uh, with 33 games. We can see there Nepo, Forster, Rodrigo, all the usual, all the usual names were all there. But what I, what I. I think is promising in a way is that look how many players here actually played, you know, like sort of 10, 15 games here. We're looking at like 20 players. So we have a really, really good squad of players we can rely on, um, which is really, really good. If we look down the bottom here, two youngsters that didn't really play a couple of other youngsters. We gave some games to at the end of the year. Um, now it's important to remember when we're looking to build our squad that this guy, Pedro Henrique, I think I, don't, I think that's beside my head. I'll just click on it just to make sure. Uh, this guy's coming back this season, so we'll have him for next year. Uh, I like to call him the new Lionel Messi. Um, unfortunately, he did have a serious injury, a hip injury, so he's been out for a long, long time. So his attributes have gone backwards a little bit. But trust me, this guy is he's special. He's going to be really, really good. $46 million he's valued at. So he was coming back, which is a, which is a good thing. Uh, hopefully, Brian Carlos will stay fit this year. Uh, as well, but yeah, I think we have a really, really good squad of players. I think it's just a case of just of tinkering, and if sort of that world star comes available, we might look to add a little bit of stardust on top of the team. In terms of goals, uh, Rodrigo was the golden boot winner, just ahead of Lionel Messi. Uh, I mean, Marin did it again for us in the eleven goals from out wide. Leroy Grealish chipping in with more goals, and I think that's more goals than Grealish has scored. I think before, um, even in the championship, I don't think he got that many for us. Uh, he got nine in the championship league goals. Uh, so he did score more in the championship, but in terms of a league season, uh, he scored five in the league this year, but that was it. Uh, he was actually quite big for us in Europe, wasn't he? He got those two goals against Atletico Madrid in the home leg. Uh, was it the quarterfinals, I think that was? Uh, but he had his best season for us, Grealish, up outside of the championship. So really, really good good year from, uh, from Super Jack there. But, you know, Rashid... Uh, the lab, look at all these guys here chipping in with goals, five or more goals, we're looking at what, ten players there at least um, Almeida was a little bit quiet this year, hopefully we'll see more of him next season uh, but yeah, really really good on that front, and assists again um, no real outstanding high numbers there to be honest, but there's lots and lots of players chipping in with the assists uh, which is good, that just shows we're not overly reliant on too many players, Harry Thomas chipping in with two assists uh, almost certainly headers down at the back post from set pieces because as I keep saying he is an absolute monster when it comes to that and average ratings uh, Dali uh, 7.54 was overall the top but of course he, I don't think he played enough games to be considered um, for the award on the night Callum Chambers now I know Callum Chambers is our club vice captain He's 30 years old now if there's one player we can we might look to replace an upgrade it's Callum Chambers. The problem is that he's English, uh, and we'll check the English, sort of the squad in a second, how we're doing with foreign players and things like that, but it's whether we can find someone that's better, that's English, uh, than Callum Chambers. That could be the... And you can see he played well when he played. He's not letting us down in any way. I just think maybe that's one place. But look at these average ratings. Look at all this green. We go all the way down to past Gaz Mosley, who is, to get over seven as a goalkeeper is quite good, to be honest. Uh, and then we have a couple on, on the, the six nine nines with uh, with the Lab and and, um, and our mate. Like I said, they were both a little bit disappointing this year, but they scored big goals for us. Um, yeah, I mean, really, it's everybody played well. I mean, if over the course of a season to get 6.95 for Paul Walker, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. And he was playing up front for a couple of games, and he's more suited to playing out wide. So, I mean, we don't have really any weak spot in the team in terms of average ratings. So it's, we, as I keep saying, we have a really, really good team. Now, if we do just have a quick look at our squad registration rules, we are, we can get two more foreign players in. Um, but we we are sort of pushing the limit. We need a minimum of eight. We currently have nine uh, first team uh, foreign players. We do have it, we can, but we can we have squad room there. 
Now, what we need to remember here is that there's a couple of guys uh, being, um, I think, who's over 21 now? I think it's, I'm going to sneeze in a second here. Yeah, it's Brian Carlos will need to be registered. Oh, he's registered this year. I think Harry Thomas needs to be registered now as well. Um, so a couple of slots will go there. But ah, there's the sneeze live on YouTube. Perfect. Um, yeah, so we do have a little bit of room, but we've just got to watch the, the minimum... Um, English players here that you know we just need to be careful with that now the one thing that I do want to keep an eye on here too with replacing um with replacing chambers hypothetically is David Bergkamp the second I think he's he's getting to the point now where he, we could maybe start to rely on he's only sort of half a star worse off than Callum Chambers is anyway um so the big question I need to ask myself is do we actually need to replace Callum Chambers or is there just going to be sort of a natural a natural progression occur there. Um, I mean, there just may be a natural progression. He's, only, he's on 62 grand a week, which is a lot, but it's not ridiculous. Um, yeah, so it's not it's not too bad there. But anyway, guys, I'll play through here. We'll see where we come back at, uh, you know, what happens. I'll, do we sign a superstar? It's got to be tempting, doesn't it? And I'll come back too for the commercial summary and things like that. We conquered all of Europe. Oh, who is this? Hello. Hey, Gaz Mosley, how is my European hero? Okay, mate, okay, mate, calm down, what's wrong? Your new contract? Speak to your agent, mate, I offered him one and he rejected it. Yeah, look, don't panic, mate, I want you to keep you at the club, uh, so when he's ready, we'll try again. What do you mean that's not good enough? Look, mate, you don't have to hand in a transfer request, we'll get this sorted, okay? Hello? Gaz? So, um, this just happened. Gaz, you might need to have a word with yourself, mate. Um, yeah, he's... He's just handed in the transfer request because of the number of promises I've broken, which was a contract that I said I would offer him at the end of the season. He expected that before the Champions League final, so I apologised, offered him a contract. The agent rejected that contract very, very quickly, mind you. <laughs> yeah, and now, now he's annoyed at me. So, we still have three years on the contract. What I have learnt from Unhappy Goalkeepers, if you've watched my Everton save and the whole Jordan Pickford debacle, is that it doesn't end well. So I'm a little bit concerned about this. Um, because we're not going to be able to offer him a contract until he, well, he has a transfer request in. And he's going to have the transfer request in until we sell him. So thoughts, people. Thoughts. Um, yeah, that's not great. Anyway, we do have the commercial summary in. Uh, you can see we have a youth team sponsor, which is nice. Uh, Three-year deal of $2.9 million, uh, which is quite a significant upgrade on the previous one of just under 300000 Sponsorship was up by about 20... Oh, maths, no, $17 million. Corporate, uh, there's prawn sandwiches. Was, we sold a few more, but what's that? Six hundred grand more of those. Match day income was up, which is good. Broadcast revenues are up competition prize money is up everything's looking good merchandise we sold 16.21 million with 7.12 million of that non-domestic we sold just over 700,000 shirts Marin Grealish Rodrigo defender Rodrigo uh, Leroy and attacker Rodrigo are the favorites I'm surprised Messi's name doesn't feature there if Messi signed for Villa I would have at least three of those shirts I think but there we go. So that's uh, the commercial summary. The other thing that's happened, you can see here our facilities were downgraded just because we hadn't upgraded them in a while. Uh, that's been taken care of. Uh, we'll get those upgraded and they should be completed by sort of early next season. Um, so that's all fine uh, fine and good there. Uh, Players quite for international duty. Nepo's been called up. Excellent stuff. Uh, the youth audit's there. And the new scouting budget is there as well. Anyway, guys, if there's any update, Gaz Mosley or otherwise, in terms of transfers, uh, we'll come back. Where the hell am I going to find myself a new goalkeeper? Unbelievable. Hello. Gaz. Mate. Oh, it's good to hear your voice. Yeah, mate. Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry too. Uh, I know. I know. Look, mate. You're loved here. Uh, we want you to stay here. What's it going to take? I tell you what. You tell me what you want, and I'll get that sent through to the agent. 95 grand a week, mate. Done. Done and done. Yeah, mate. Look, that's a huge relief. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. All right. Enjoy your summer. Everybody, a huge sigh of relief. Gaz Mosley has signed a new five-year contract. 95 grand a week, first team regular. You can see all the stipulations, the rest of the contract there. 
but he's happy again. I'm assuming that he's going to get over the broken promise thing. No, he hasn't. So maybe we will still have an issue, but I'm sure it'll be fine now. I'm sure it'll be fine. Gaz Mosley's here for another five years. Oh, right. It is July 1st. The it's sort of end of uh, contracts are up. Uh, what's someone looking for? The free transfer date. Now, I have signed somebody. It's a goalkeeper. Uh, when Gaz Mosley decided that he was not happy with me, I did slightly panic and offer a guy a contract who was out of contract, a really, really good keeper. I was thinking of doing this sort of thing anyway uh, and getting a, a good backup in just because Cadell was okay when he had to fill in for Gaz this year, but he wasn't fantastic. This guy potentially, though, is a five-star goalkeeper, or four-and-a-half-star goalkeeper. So some proper uh, backup for Gaz Mosley. Alexander Perrier, we've got to say, got him on a free, 21 grand a week, which for a player of that this, that ability, never mind that that uh, potential, is really, really good. We got him, he was Paris Saint-Germain, um, came through their system, they never really used him, so thank you, Paris, we'll take that, not a problem at all. Uh, so that is our new backup goalkeeper. What do we do with Cadell now? Do we keep him as a third choice? Um, I'm thinking perhaps we do, just because... If we go to positions here, he's he's English or British. He's not English, he's British. Uh, and he's, he's decent enough, isn't he? He's not bad. Um, now, the other thing that I have done here is, again, panic mode because, guys, I thought we were going to lose him, is we've signed uh, another, another young goalkeeper. Um, again, potentially really, really good. Scouts rated him very, very highly. When he actually officially joins, uh, which I think is later on this summer, um, the 27th of July this summer. Yeah, so he's about a month away yet, 26th of July. Uh, we'll see exactly what the star ratings are, but the scouts are predicting him to be a, a, a sort of a four, four and a half star goalkeeper. So again, really, really good backup. This guy is only 17. I'm thinking we might loan him out, potentially even back to Portugal if we can. Um, yeah, so we're, we're well served now for goalkeepers. I'm kind of happy we've done that. The other thing that we've signed here is a young defender um, potentially looking to replace Callum Chambers sort of longer term. Uh, he's only 17 right now. He's Brazilian, so he's not going to join. You can see that till the till 2026, the summer. So next summer, uh, once he's turned 18. Um, but again, potentially, um, if we can get the scout report up here, uh, potentially quite a good defender. Uh, I'm hoping we get him in young like we did with our... Uh, uh, Rodrigo defender um, by the time he's sort of challenging for a first team place he should be sort of English qualified uh, which means he's not going to then be a foreign player so I think that I think he'll be a really really good signing for us he hasn't cost us much at all um, can I see what it was he cost us uh, 140 grand absolutely nothing um, well, he'll end up earning that a week in wages, I dare say. So we've, we've paid nothing for him. An absolute worst case scenario. We'll sell him on for a massive, massive profit. Um, so that is, that's where we're at at July 1st. We'll have a look now. Gas still has requested to leave. I'm not convinced that this is going to work, even though he has signed a new contract. It's kind of a bit of a bug in the game. I had this issue, if you watch the Everton save, with Jordan Pickford. And we ended up having to sell Jordan Pickford because he just was making so many stupid mistakes. He actually cost us the Champions League. Um, yeah, so I'm really, really concerned about this with Gaz. I'm hoping it'll clear itself up, but we, at least now we do have somebody in who can who can come in, back it up, and it should be fine. But yeah, I'm a little bit concerned. In terms of uh, bids, uh, oh, I should say too, David Bergkamp II has signed a new contract, so he's here for another five years, so that's really good news. We've locked him in. Um, we have had a lot of loan offers. Pretty much anybody that's got a youth product named after you, we've had loan offers for you. The the actual bid we had, we did have for Lee Hendry. Uh, we had a £28 million bid come in from um, from Huddersfield. Now, we're not going to sell him. We're not going to loan him out. He's, a, he's getting better and better, really. Look at that vision of 17 now. Uh, so we're not going to sell him. But yeah, that was the only real concrete bid that we had come in. Um, that's sort of the mid-summer transfer update, I guess. Uh, so if anything else happens, I will uh, I will come back. All you need is lab. Da, 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 da. All you need is lab. Da, 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 da. All you need is lab. Lab. Labadovich. <laughs> Labadovich. 
We have a new transfer to announce, and I don't usually sign players just because of a name, but we've got Thor. We have a Thor. <laughs> he couldn't say no to that. Uh, I think this actually is going to be a quite a good signing for us. Uh, ten, just over ten million from a uh, from a Saudi Arabian club. He's a central defender. This is sort of a more immediate sort of backup replacement sort of person for uh, Callum Chambers. You can see already ready to go first team player. Um, potentially even better. Uh, good physically. Decent enough mentally. Uh, he has all the right attributes there technically. Um, so I think he'll do quite well. What I'm kind of thinking here is that he'll come in and sort of be the third, fourth choice centre back behind Rodrigo and force us to sort of rotating in with Chambers, with uh, with David Burkamp the second, and with AR. But I'm also thinking with AR. We might need him in this in this sort of number six role. If we are going to play like this in certain games, we only really have Tenali that can play there. So we might need to look to sort of have AR as a backup in there. So I think if he's going to sort of be the backup for the DM role, then I do think we need another centre back in um, sort of in, in line there. And Chambers is sort of our third choice right back right now because we don't really have we have two really really good options first and ch second uh, choice in um, Fiorini and in Kosic. But I can't really sign, and I'm not going to sign a big name player or you know, a big money transfer to be third choice. Callum Chambers, with his attributes, can he can fill in there. So we'll look to use him in that role for now, and hope if we find a youngster or something, we'll look to pick them up as well. Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of what I'm thinking with that signing. Uh, in terms of contract extensions, Grealish has signed a new contract. Uh, where are we here? We're just doing friendlies. Friendlies have just started, so that's why the team is sort of a bit all over the place as we get match fitness going. But Grealish, another three-year contract. That takes him up to 32, um, at which point, I mean, he's what he, we, he got an extra five grand a week on this contract, but at 32, we're going to start and wind him down a little bit, I think. So um, so he signed a new contract, which is good. And Tenali has also signed a new contract. Where is Tenali? Uh, Tenali, 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 uh, there he is there, um, so he has a new contract, he has a four-year contract, so that takes him to 29, um, he's on, still only on 65 grand a week, Tenali is really, really good value for money, um, but yeah, so that's, that's the two contract extensions that have been done, I don't know if there'll be too much else to happen, this transfer window, there may or may not be, I'm always looking for better players where we can find them, uh, so if anything else happens, I will come back. Okay, we have a departure to announce. Carlos Pedro, one of a young Portuguese winger who we signed on a free transfer. We've sold him off to uh, Southampton. 17 million up front, 50% of, a, of, a, of the percentage of a resale profit, which is not too bad. Uh, he was a good player. I ideally wanted him. Remember we signed him when I think we had Mo Beda, was it at left back, and I was looking at him to play more as a, as a, as a wing back. We kind of went away from that formation. So he wasn't really playing. When we played him last year, he did well playing sort of more as a winger. Um, but we just weren't using him, to be honest. I don't know if we would have used him. But anyway, we signed him on a free transfer. Two years later, we've sold him for $17 million. Uh, We can't really complain about that, can we? So good luck to him. Um, he's a good player. I'm sure he'll come back and haunt us being at Southampton now. But... We weren't using him, so we've made a nice little profit on that one. The other news to catch you up on, it's only minor news, really. We've had one of our players return from loan. Uh, it is... Where is he here? Pedro Enrique is back from loan. He was off on loan. We signed him... We signed him for... Was it a lot of money? 14 million we signed him for. He's been off in uh, in Brazil on loan. He did get a serious injury. I think he had a hip injury. Um, so he didn't play as much as I ideally would have liked uh, while he was on loan. But he's back now. Uh, this is sort of the new Messi, as I've dubbed him. Uh, we're looking to him to sort of play that role, or a similar role anyway. Um, we're kind of kind of retraining him into that deep lying forward because I think he'll, he, he's essentially the new Messi. I mean, he's got really good physical attributes there. He's got the vision. He's got the off the ball movement. The flair could do with a little bit of work, but it's not too bad. Uh, passing technique is all there. Finishing dribbling. So I think I think we're basically my plan is this is the new Messi. Uh, we just need to fit him into that role there so we can sort of play in the number ten or as a deep lying forward. Um, yeah, but uh, it's good to have him back, and hopefully we'll start seeing these attributes going the right way now, now that he's back from injury and going to be playing and training with us. So that's the news. Uh, will there be anything else? I'm not too sure, uh, but well, there always is, isn't there? Let's face it, I can't help myself. I'll always sign a player. His name is Alpha. It's Alpha Silla. He wears number eight and plays for Aston Villa. And just like that, the transfer window has closed. We have, it's been a quiet one for us, but there has been some money spent. You can see the big ones there. Uh, Ed, Edu, this guy has gone to Manchester United for big money. Um, 
Looks a decent enough player, doesn't he? Felix Rocker, great name. He has gone to Liverpool, a striker. Again, looks decent, doesn't he? Looks uh, looks quite good. Up and Yanko, we did have a, a brief consideration of signing this guy until we saw the wage demands. 215 grand, it was never going to happen for us. And it was big money too, plus the 72 million. That's despite being sort of uh, Premier League champions, European champions... That is still out of our out of our range. I did have a bit of a fallout with the board trying to get Villa Park. Uh, well, we can't expand anymore, so we'd have to move stadium. Um, I did have a little bit of a fallout with the board trying to get a new stadium built. I mean, to be honest, the main reason I'd like a new stadium built is look at this. I am now a legend. Is there going to be the Aussie Villain Stadium? That would be something of just absolute beauty for me, wouldn't it? Some notes here. Favoured personnel. Marin, Rodrigo, Livakovic, Gaz Mosley is now favoured personnel. As long as he just doesn't leave us because he thinks I've broken promises. Uh, and uh, but both Rodrigos are there. Uh, and into the icons level, there is now Jack Grealish. But that was always going to happen. He's already there, I think, in real life now anyways. And he's cemented in, uh, in club folklore. Um, so it'd be nice if we could get Grealish into the legends and some of these favoured personnels into the icons and legends as well. Uh, but yeah, if there was to be a new stadium... I've got to be half a chance, don't I, of getting it named after me. So that would be, uh, yeah, on a very selfish level, something worth doing. Let's have a look at the uh, sort of the squad that we have now for the year. Um, please, game. There we go. Now, in preseason, we have been playing and score, be playing better, scoring more goals, playing like this. Um, so we're sort of we'll look to use Almeida maybe a little bit more in this role. He doesn't sort of show up in in the in the players there right now. But we will use a number 10 on occasion as well. But the strikers that we have, we have got Rodrigo, uh, who will actually more likely play out on the left, to be honest. Brian Carlos, um, just back from his series. I think he did break an ankle or a leg or he had a serious injury. So he's just come back for that. It seems like every year he misses preseason due to an injury. Um, so we'll try and get him fit. Uh, the lab, of course, will be around uh, to play for us. Messi will be the number one to start the year. Um I mean, the whole reason we started playing this formation is with the deep lying forward is just so Messi can play his passes. Uh, he can't move, as I keep saying, but everything else about him is just top notch. Uh, Blake Scully, again, another one here that that can play up top. I'm not. I think maybe we'll look to use him a little bit more out on, out on the left there. Uh, but the other big option, I think, is Pedro uh, Enrique. He is, as I, as I said, not that long ago, he is sort of the new Messi. So. Uh, we've got good options up top, which I'm happy with. Left side, maybe a little bit short, but I think we'll be okay because we've got Marin, who can play out there. We've got Rodrigo, who can play out there. And then, of course, Blake Scully, who can play out there as well. We go over to the right. We've got Rashid. We know what he can do. He's on his day a really, really good winger. Marin, who I increasingly like over on the right, actually, with him, you know, one, him on one side, Rodrigo on the other. Uh, Messi can, but he won't play out there. Nick Roberts is another one. Um, that can play out there, as can, of course, Alpha Silla. Uh, you tried him there at, a, at one or two preseason games, did really, really well. Um, so we might look to use him out there as well. And other options here, Brian Carlos, we won't really be using him out there. The other main option, I think, is Paul Walker. Um, a decent enough option out there on the right. In midfield, so if we look at sort of our attacking midfielders, obviously Jack Grealish is king amongst them, isn't he? But Alpha Silla is a world-class player in the making, uh, so he'll get games there, as will Lee Hendry. Um, as will, I don't, I think if we're going to use Pedro Enrique, we'll probably use him more in a number 10 role. Uh, instead of that flood back, but uh, he's coming along nicely, as is Gary Turpy. He's 17 now, um, just an absolute star. He has signed a, a, a professional contract as well. David Morris is Lancaster, no. And Chris, Chris Hughes is one I'm considering. Uh, 18 has been doing well for the uh, for the under 18s and under 23s, so we will consider using him. I think this year you can see he's coming along quite nicely. If we look at the more defensive side of things, Leroy. Uh, will sort of be the deep line playmaker, you know, sort of first choice there. AR, I think we can look to use uh, along with Tenali uh, and then Baal as well. Uh, and those those guys are pretty much the same people we'll look to use in the in the DM role uh, if and when we play with that position. Now, Rodrigo. Now, unfortunately, defender Rodrigo has picked up an injury. Uh, he is going to be missing for the first few weeks of the season, but he is one of our first choice centre-backs along with Jan Forster, obviously. Uh, he is absolute money. Backup centre backs, Callum Chambers. Uh, he's solid. He's solid, uh, and AR as well. Though we will look to use AR in midfield as well this year. Thor, uh, love having me a Thor in the in the team. Uh, another just good depth at centre back. Uh, David Bergkamp as well, uh, a good option. And Harry Thomas is still around. Now we are running into problems with Premier League squad registration. 
I don't think Harry Thomas is going to be in the Premier League squad, but Harry, you will still play cup games, both uh, League Cup and, um, and FA Cup. Uh, you will start those. Um, but yeah, of course you're 22 now. We've just, I've, I've got to try and rejig the squad a little bit to get everybody in where I can. Um, but yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a player I like having just, just raw, raw talent and good in the air as well. So, um, yeah, definitely one for the cups. Now on left side, we have Nepo. Um, we know what he can do, don't we? We know what Dali can do as well. Uh, Casey Beck is coming along nicely as well. Um, so there's Casey there, uh, and then a couple of the David Burkamp and Harry Thomas can play out there if needed. On the right side, we know we have two really, really good options to start with. It's Kosic and Fiorini behind him. Um, they're as good as each other, really, aren't they? I think Kosic is maybe just a little bit better getting forward. And then Callum Chambers as the backup. Um, good stuff there for him as a third choice right back. The goalkeepers, if Gaz keeps playing well, Gaz will stay our number one. Um, He's got five years to contract, so he's, we're not at any risk of losing him on a free transfer. Uh, it's just a matter of if he's going to, if he's going to keep playing, or if he's going to decide that he doesn't like me anymore. Uh, we know we have Perrier in there now as a backup, and he's a world class backup as well. And then Cadell uh, in the team as well as the backup uh, third choice goalkeeper. Uh, and the other keeper, of course, we did uh, get across the line here is Mario. The, the Portuguese kid. Um, there he is there, valued at 5.5 million. I won the kid as well. Um, I might still look to loan him out if, if if MLS comes in. It might be worth doing, uh, learning him out for a year or two and just making sure he gets, um, yeah, you know, gets his football and continues to develop. So there we go. That is uh, is our team for this season. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys, of, uh, of the team for this year. I think it's relatively solid. Um, are we a left winger short? Perhaps, but we have younger options we can bring in if we need to. I think we're okay at centre back. I mean, six, seven centre backs should be enough, shouldn't it? Uh, same with right back. It's if we get an injury to Kosic or Fiorini, then maybe we start to look a little bit short. But yeah, let's. I say left mid and, and right back are maybe where, where we could be caught a little bit short. But I wasn't going to spend big money on a on a big player. Maybe we shouldn't have sold uh, Carlos Pedro. Um, we should actually have a look at the transfer window, shouldn't we, how things have gone. Um, we sent out Stefan uh, Sherwood, our young Australian winger. He's gone out on loan to the Scottish Premier League. One of our young goalkeepers has gone off to our feeder club, Solihull Moors. Obviously, Carlos Pedro, could we have kept him as a third-choice winger? Perhaps, but we sold him on for $17 million. And Michael Cook, again, one of our young uh, left-sided wingers. We can always call him back. Um, but yeah, he's he's out on loan as well. And the ends, uh, Perrier on, uh, on a free... Uh, as we've already seen, Thor Hovick, what a name, uh, on for 10.25 million, and then Mario for half a million, potentially rising to just under a million uh, for him. We bought in 17 million, we spent uh, 7.75, once again we've operated on a profit, um, but yeah, I'd say, it's, yeah, let me know what you think, it's a quiet transfer window isn't it, but I think it's it's we've done what we needed to do. Uh, anyway, guys, that's it for today. If you have enjoyed that, please do hit thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell to not upload new episodes. We'll be back next time for the first game of our Premier League defense. And we have none other than Wolverhampton Wanderers. So that's one to look forward to there. I'll see you then, guys. Take care.